Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of the material world. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. <clears throat> uh, as one is bewildered by the illusory representations um, of water seen on fire or land seen on water. But once he bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on land, seen water. Water seen on fire, land seen on water. Mm -hmm. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of material. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaito Votra. Dharma Pujita Kaito Vutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Moon. Shivadam Tapu Trayon Moon. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Prayer Ishwara. Kimba Prayer Ishwara. Sadio Hridi Avarudhyate Tra. Sadio Hridi Avarudhita Tikra. Tibihi Susu Subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially this motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from religion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As one attentively and submissively hears this message of Bhagavatam. By the culture of knowledge. By the, this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyatam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahuraska bhuvibhavukaha. Muhur ahuraska bhuvibhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mature, mm. mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. 
It emanated from the lips of Shishu Gudev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this food has become even more tasteful. <clears throat> Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for including all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hridyan Tastohi Abhadrani. Vidu Noti Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literature. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing with Nasta him. Prayesu Bhadresu. Nasta Prayesu Bhadresu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee na naturally develops his transcendental dormant. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas Tamo Bhava. Tadarajas Tamo Bhava. Kama loba dayas chaye. Kama loba dayas chaye. Chaita etara na vidam. Chaita etara na vidam. Sitvam sattve prasidati. Sitvam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogata. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnana. Mukta sangha sajayate. Mukta sangha sajayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Siyante chasche karmani. Chidyante sasya karmani. Drista evatmani shvare. Drista evatmani shvare. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanto 1, Chapter 16, Verse Number 24. Idam mamakchaksvatavadimulam. Idam mamakchaksvatavadimulam. Vasundare yena vikarsitasi. Vasdun dare yena vikarsitasi. Kalin vate balinam baliyasa. Kalin vate balinam baliyasa. Surarchitam kim hitam ambasobagam. Surarchitam kim kritam ambasobagam. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Mother, you are the reservoir of all riches. Please inform me of the root cause of your tribulations by which you have been reduced to such a weak state. I think that the powerful influence of time which conquers the most powerful must have forcibly taken away all your fortune which was adored even by the demigods. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. By the grace of the Lord, each and every planet is created fully equipped 
So not only is this earth fully equipped with all the riches for the maintenance of its inhabitants, but also when the Lord descends on the earth, the whole earth becomes so enriched with all kinds of opulences that even the denizens of heaven worship it with all affection. But by the will of the Lord, the whole earth can at once be changed. He can do and undo a thing by his sweet will. Therefore, no one should consider himself to be self-sufficient or independent of the Lord. Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Tai Gauru Premanadi. So the the false ego of the living entity is expressed in Bhagavad Gita uh, where the living entity actually thinks he is the doer where in reality uh, we're being forced to do things. Prakriti kriyamana ni gunai karma ni sarva sahankara vivadatma kataham iti manyate. Third chapter, 27th verse. Krishna tells Arjuna, the spirit soul, bewildered by the influence of false ego, thinks himself the doer of activities that are in reality carried out by the three modes of material nature. Now, if you tell someone this, they would scoff at you and say, what, what kind of nonsense are you talking about? I'm the doer. I know what I'm doing. But yet, it's not true. We're being forced to do things. Like, for example, do you remember choosing to be born? No. So what should that tell you then? If you can't remember choosing to be born, what do you think? Someone else has to remember. Yeah. You were forced to do it. And are you choosing to get old and sick? So what does that tell you? being forced on you. Yeah. And I know there are crazy people who want to die, but uh, do you want to die? <laughs> no, it's, it's being forced on you. So right away we should be, <laughs> that should be enough to convince us that we're not in control. Right? And then there are many other things besides that. So Prabhupada says in a purport, two persons, one in Krishna consciousness and the other in material consciousness, working on the same level, may appear to be working on the same platform, but there is a wide gulf of difference in their respective positions. The person in material consciousness is convinced by false ego that he is the doer of everything. He does not know that the mechanism of the body is produced by material nature, which works under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. Now see, that's, that's a very profound statement right there. Now, oftentimes, people get sick. And they think, oh, uh, I'm not worried. I'll go to the doctor and he'll fix me. Well, yeah, sometimes the doctors do fix. Like I have this one friend, he's not a devotee, but he's a friend. He had a, uh, a five-level uh, heart attack. In other words, they had to put, what they basically what they did, they took the heart out of his body and took a vein, a long vein in, in, his, in his leg out cut it into five pieces and sewed it into the, the heart and then put the heart back. Right? So usually you have one bypass, two bypass, three bypass. He had five bypass surgery, right? And he's still alive. He's walking and talking, right? So sometimes they can do things like that to prolong life for a little bit. Or sometimes they can change your liver or change your gallbladder or change your heart. Nowadays they change your face also. A lot of people need that one. And uh, they can put new hair on your head 
and they can uh, carve your nose so instead of going like this, it goes like that. You know. <laughs> you know. So they can do all these things, you know. And if you if you don't have a leg, they can put a you know a, a, a artificial leg. Uh, however they cannot prolong life indefinitely. They can make all these changes, but eventually you get to be 100 years old, even with a new heart, even with new liver, around that time you're gonna die. You're not gonna live 500 years by changing all the body parts. Not in Kali Yuga. So, uh, this statement that uh, the uh, everything is working under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. The materialistic person has no knowledge that ultimately he is under the control of Krishna. So there's something about Krishna that, that we should understand. And I just read this today, and it's very, very interesting. Uh, where Prabhupada says. that Krishna can change matter to spirit and spirit to matter. That's an amazing statement. Oh, let me see where that is. That is in the, yeah, this is in the, the eighth morning walk in the Life Comes From Life in Prabhupada, in the Prabhupada speaking. Uh, and he says, the Supreme Lord expands himself as the Paramatma, or Super Soul, in everyone's heart. Although dwelling in the material body, this Super Soul is not material, even though he is the original source of the material body. Because heat and light are the energies of the sun, the sun never feels too hot. Similarly, for the Paramatma, there's no distinction between spiritual and material, because both the material and the spiritual energies emanate from him. So in other words, what he's implying here, and he says it, that we see things as spiritual and material. Krishna doesn't differentiate between the two because they're his energies. See? Sometimes we see that clouds cover the sun, but that is actually our imperfection. We on this planet experience both sunshine and cloudiness, but in the sun, even though it can create clouds, only sunshine is experienced. Similarly, the division of matter and spirit is our experience, not God's. Whether he comes in a so-called material body or in a spiritual body, he is always spiritual. For him, matter and spirit are the same because he is the energetic. These are just his energies. He's the one that controls them. For him, matter and spirit are the same because he is the energetic. He can turn matter into spirit and spirit into matter. So, we, we don't realize this. Uh, we become fooled by modern science, which is actually modern uh, junk science. This is real science, understanding about Krishna and Krishna consciousness. What, what people are teaching us in the schools and, and what we read in the papers and what we read in books is junk. It's false. It's uh, half-truths at the most. So uh, this idea that we are in control is false. We're not at, n at no point are we in control neither of this body or even the activities that per we're performing. So there are many other verses in Bhagavad Gita that confirm this. Uh, first, let's finish this purport from uh, 327. The materialist pers person has no knowledge that ultimately he is under the control of Krishna. The person in false ego takes all credit for doing everything independently and that is the symptom of his nescience or ignorance. He does not know that this gross body and subtle body is the creation of material nature 
under the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as such, his bodily and mental activities should be engaged in the service of Krishna, in Krishna consciousness. The ignorant man forgets that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is known as Rishikesha, or the master of the senses of the material body. For due to his long misuse of the senses and sense gratification, he is factually bewildered by the false ego, which makes him forget his eternal relationship with Krishna. So, in the fifth chapter, also, there's more information about this. Let's see what that says. Fifth chapter, 14th verse says, <clears throat> When the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions, he resides happily in the city of nine gates, the material body, neither working nor causing work to be done. And the Prabhupada writes, One second, I just want to see one thing here. So, in this verse, 514, the embodied, I'm sorry, 514. I, I think I read 513, yeah. 514 says, the embodied spirit, master of the city of his body, does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of action. All this is enacted by the modes of material nature. Right, so I, I read the wrong verse uh, previously. So, in the purport, Prabhupada explains, the living entity, as will be explained in the seventh chapter, is one of the energies or natures of the Supreme Lord, but is distinct from matter, which is another nature called inferior of the Lord. Somehow, the superior nature, the living entity, has been in contact with the material nature since time immemorial. The temporary body or material dwelling place which he obtains is the cause of varieties of activities and their resultant reactions. Living in such a conditional atmosphere, one suffers the results of the activities of the body by identifying himself in ignorance with the body. It is ignorance acquired from time immemorial that is the cause of bodily suffering and distress. As soon as the living entity becomes aloof from the activities of the body, he becomes free from the reactions as well. As long as he is in the city of the body, he appears to be the master of it but actually he is neither its proprietor nor controller of its actions and reactions. He is simply in the midst of the material ocean, struggling for existence. The waves of the ocean are tossing him, and he has no control over them. This, his best solution is to get out of the water by transcendental Krishna consciousness. That alone will save him from all turmoil. So we see that we're not the controller. We're being controlled at all times. But yet, we're out of ignorance. We think we're the controller and we unnecessarily suffer. And Prabhupada says that uh, Krishna consciousness is uh, designed to eliminate suffering. Krishna consciousness is designed to eliminate suffering. And how is that? Because it is a scientific movement designed to alleviate, alleviate suffer, human suffering. So, uh, Prabhupada says, we must suffer more than animals. Krishna consciousness is not a bogus, sentimental religious movement. It is a scientific movement designed to alleviate human suffering. So, I don't think we realize this, and, and it's because of this false ego 
that tries to convince us that we are in control. But until we become free from the influence of the modes of material nature, we will continually have this illusory concept of life that we are in control. So therefore it says, Yechaeva satvaka bhava rajasas tamasas chaye matayveti tanvidi natvaham tesute mai. Know that all states of being, be they of goodness, passion, or ignorance, are manifested by my energy, Krishna says. I am in one sense everything, but I am independent. I am not under the modes of material nature, for they, on the contrary, are within me. So, every one of us, Chibir Gunamayir Bhavir Ebe Samam Idam Jagat, Moitan Namijanati, Mame Bya Param Avyayam, every one of us are deluded by the three modes goodness, passion, and ignorance. The whole world does not know me, Krishna says, who am above the modes and inexhaustible. So, to understand Krishna, we must rise above the influence of the three modes of material nature. There's no other way. And that's a science. Mamchayo vipacharina bhakti yogina sevate saganam samatityaitan brahmabhuyaya kalpate. That science of how to rise above the influence of the three modes, which are entangling and condition us to do what? They condition us to suffer. And we are helpless while we're conditioned in such a state. We purposely would do things that just increase our suffering. And it's all due to ignorance. So, therefore, Krishna consciousness helps us rise above the influence of the modes of material nature. And rather quickly, if we follow strictly the four regulative principles and chant Hare Krishna. However, if we don't do that, then we remain prisoners in this world. And uh, there's a nice verse that explains that also in the third chapter. Is it the third chapter? Let me see where that is. No, it's not the third chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> and this verse says that Whatever we're doing, eating, sleeping, mating, or defending, uh, we're being forced to do it, although we think that we're independent. And, and therefore, uh, that's called maya. Maya means we're convinced we're right, but we're actually wrong. And we're convinced that certain things are good for us, just like... Uh, Previously, uh, people would think that uh, whiskey is a, is, a, is a panacea. So whenever they would get sick, they'd drink some extra whiskey. Whenever they had an itch, they would put whiskey on it. Whenever this or that, they would use whiskey. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, it may help in a, l a little bit because it's alcohol, right? I mean, you're... You're using alcohol right now as a, as a hand sanitizer, right? And you're breathing in the fumes of it when you do it. Uh, and uh, uh, if, if you say, no, I'm not going to use alcohol as a hand sanitizer. I'm going to use uh, oregano oil. And people say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but actually, oregano oil is a better uh, antiseptic and uh, bacteria killer than uh, alcohol. So uh, this is the thing that, uh, uh, and therefore uh, we are bewildered by maya and uh, we uh, choose to do things. Just like people think that taking uh, chemotherapy and, and uh, radiation therapy will heal uh, cancer. Well, you don't heal the body by putting poisons in it. Or if you are going to take a poison, it has to be very, very, very low doses. Uh, so one poison can kill another poison. But it's a dangerous process, right? Because you make a little mistake, you can kill yourself. Just like if the, uh, 
radiologist makes a mistake, he can kill you. He, he's putting poison into your body. Right? So, therefore, the Ayurveda does not use poisons. It only uses natural substances. Now, those substances may contain a little bit of poison, uh, sometimes, sometimes certain poisons, but it's buffered by other things naturally. So therefore, you have things like turmeric, and you have things like ginger, and you have things like uh, oregano, and peppermint, and cinnamon, and all these different plants. Uh, they're healers. They're powerful healers. And if you uh, know how to use them properly, you can, number one, engage in preventive medicine, or number two, uh, you you can use them as curative. Right? Best is preventive. Uh, an ounce of prevention is worth tons of cure, as they say in English. An ounce of prevention is worth tons of cure. So if you eat your medicine every day in the form of natural substances that are non-poisonous, you build up your immunity and you won't get sick, even though everybody else around you is getting sick. Just like uh, uh, during the plague in France, there was a group of uh, robbers. There, there were four, four thieves. And when someone got the plague, they would put them in a separate uh, facility. Right? Uh, and like say, if it's in a village, they would, they would designate one house where they would put the sick person because it was so contagious. So, uh, and sometimes, that person was in there alone at night sleeping, right? The sick person. So these four thieves would come into the house and uh, extract the gold teeth of the person right? mm. or steal whatever they could. And they never got sick. So when they were caught, the French police told them, look, you guys know something that we don't know about. And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, you've been going around uh, actually touching these people, pulling out their teeth and doing you know, things, and you, none of you got sick. So what's your secret? And they remained silent. They said, if you tell us your secret, we'll let you go free. So they did. They told them the secret, and then the French police, of course, are liars. They killed them. <laughs> <laughs> but... They got the secret, and it's called uh, the Four Thieves, and it's a formula. In fact, Uncle Harry's has the product, Four Thieves. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a blend of different essential oils, basically, and plant extracts. But they were using it as an antiseptic. Right. So, and there's this one uh, councilman, and in the uh, uh, Capitol Hill area of uh, Seattle. This was some years ago. His wife was always ordering four thieves from Uncle Harry's. So <laughs> one day we asked her, so what, why, why are you ordering so much? She said, oh, well, my husband uses it. And, and they said, well, who's your husband? And she said, oh, he's a councilman. And, and he has these open days where anyone can come and, and, and complain to him or ask questions, you know, and they always want to uh, the shake hands with him. So he wants to, you know, be a good politician, so he shakes hands, and as soon as they leave, he puts the four, four thieves on his hands. <laughs> and so far, he hasn't gotten sick. So you see, uh, it's very funny how people want to uh, protect themselves, but the best protection is a Chan Hare Krishna, regularly bathe, eat only prasadam that's prepared with love and devotion for Krishna, and your body will build up natural immunity uh, by having a, a powerful immune system. So, therefore, this verse, uh, the next verse in the third chapter, 28, says, Prakriti guna samudha sajante Tan Krishna Vido Mandan 
Krishna vin na vichalyate. Bewildered by the modes of material nature, the ignorant fully engage themselves in material activities and become attached. But the wise should not unsettle them, although these duties are inferior due to the performer's lack of knowledge. Now, this is an interesting verse. And in the purport, I won't read the whole purport, but it says, men who are ignorant cannot appreciate activities in Krishna consciousness, and therefore Lord Krishna advises us not to disturb them and simply waste valuable time. But the devotees of the Lord are more kind than the Lord because they understand the purpose of the Lord. Consequently, they undertake all kinds of risks even to the point of approaching ignorant men to try to engage them in the acts of Krishna consciousness, which are absolutely necessary for the human being. So this is uh, the, let's say, uh, consciousness of a devotee. Prabhupada says, the devotee will sacrifice everything for the goodwill of the Lord and at the same time discharge prescribed duties without claiming proprietorship. Arjuna did not have to consider the order of the Lord, he had only to execute his order. The Supreme Lord is the soul of all souls, therefore one who depends solely and wholly on the Supreme Soul without personal consideration, or in other words, one who is fully Krishna conscious is called Adhyatma Chetas, Adhyatma Chetas uh, is Sanskrit for a person who has full knowledge of their, themselves and their relationship with Krishna and act in that relationship by engaging in devotional service. That's what Adhyatma Chetas means in Sanskrit. It's a very profound statement. And Nirasi, so that's this verse, nirasir nirmamo bhutva, says, means that one has to act on the order of the master, but should not expect fruitive results. So here we have uh, a verse, uh, Bhagavad Gita 3.30, which is the purpose of Bhagavad Gita. It's a very important verse. Mai sarvani karmani, mam, Sanyasyat matma adyat machetasa nirasir nirmamo bhutva yujasva vikitas priha vikita jwara. Therefore, Arjuna, surrendering all your works unto me with full knowledge of me, without desires for profit, with no claims to proprietorship, and free from lethargy or laziness, fight. <coughs> this is the solution to all problems of life. That's why Prabhupada says. This verse indicates the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> so when we preach, this is a verse that we should keep in mind all the time. This is what it means to, uh, that Krishna consciousness is designed to uh, remedy or alleviate human suffering. People suffer because they don't have knowledge of who they are and their eternal relationship with Krishna. They don't understand the value of devotional service. Their desires are always with, the, with uh, the, the aim or goal of getting some profit. And they claim proprietorship, and, but yet oftentimes they're lazy. And they don't want to surrender the results of their work to Krishna. Uh, because they have they don't have knowledge of Krishna. Like uh, when we went to uh, the Asian Pacific Cultural Center uh, ten days ago and distributed prasadam there, when the the lady that was in charge uh, they 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 filmed the whole uh, two hours we were there, and the lady kept and it was being uh, uh, shown. Uh, live to uh, members of the, uh, uh, you know, the Asian Pacific Cultural Center. And, you know, just like we're sh we we uh, project what we're our programs. They also 
do the same thing. It's also a cultural center like, like ours. And uh, so uh, they were uh, uh, trying to convince people to come and take prashadam, right? But in the beginning, they had an introduction and part of that introduction, the lady was explaining about the food truck, and then she let her brother do what's called a statement of, propri of property. And he, he said the following. He said, we acknowledge that the land we're standing on is the property of the Puyallup tribe of native, native people. In other words, they don't say this belongs to the United States. They said this, this land is, I, and, and we ask forgiveness for any uh, mistakes we make or in any way uh, desecrate uh, this holy land that belongs to the Puyallup and the Salish, she said, Puyallup and Salish tribes. In other words, they make a statement of proprietorship of the land that they're on, right? And, and this is something that native people do. They, they all just like, uh, he, he said, and I come from such and such a village in, uh, in uh, the island of, uh, and I am Samoan, and that, is, that land is native land, it belongs to Samoans in the same way I recognize now uh, the land that we're standing on is the land of the Puyallup tribe, native people, like that. That's the first time I ever heard that. But they're making a statement of proprietorship. But here it says, Sanyas ya yat machetasa, nirasir nirmamo bhutva yujasva vikitatsura. In other words, he's saying, uh, surrender all your works unto me with full knowledge of me, without desires for profit, and with no claims of proprietorship. What that man did, at the, he made a claim of proprietorship of the land. So, as long as these type of concepts are in the mind, and it's all related to false ego, there's no possibility of engaging in uh, devotional service with any purity, although people might be moral in some way. In fact, by the way, the Samoans are very big meat eaters, and their big bodies like, like this. I don't know if you ever see a Samoan person. Right? And their, their, their national food is pig. They'll take a whole pig and put it on a skewer and, and make a barbecue and eat the whole thing. <laughs> see? And that's why many of them have bad health. And actually, I'm, I'm, because I'm going to go back there again, I'm going to study a little bit more about Samoans. I don't think that was their real uh, uh, national food. Uh, in, in history because although they might consider that but usually native people they they're usually healthy and many Samoans are not healthy anymore and the reason is that once the British and other explorers came to their islands they introduced the Western diet and many of the people change their indigenous diet to the Western diet. And because of that, their health went down, their, the quality of their teeth and everything, just, uh, you know, and they started having Western diseases like diabetes and heart attacks and things like that. So the, the original native uh, people's diet, uh, in, especially in villages, was much more natural than just eating meat. You know? uh, so I want to I want to study that. I know for sure, in most countries where there are indigenous people, they don't eat animals that much because the animals that they have, like cows and horses, are valuable. They need them. You know, the the the, the bull is plowing the land. The cow is giving milk, and they're not going to eat them uh, so much at all. Maybe when they die or something like that. So uh, there's a lot of misconceptions, even by native people, of their own tradition because of uh, contact with Western civilizations. Okay, so therefore, coming back to this, the main point here, and that is that 
the, the, when the Lord descends on the earth, the whole earth becomes so enriched with all kinds of opulences that even the denizens of heaven worship it with all affection. So, we are very fortunate because Prabhupada has taught us how to worship the deities. And the deities are the presence of Radha and Krishna and Sita and Ram and Lakshman, Hanuman and, and uh, Gornitai and Lord Nishinga, Lakshmi Nishinga. They're actually here. We're actually able to see them. We're actually able to serve them. So, uh, therefore, uh, they bring, the, the, the deities are the source of opulence uh, and all kinds of uh, positive things. So we're very fortunate that we've come in contact with Krishna consciousness. We don't realize how fortunate we are. And uh, the earth becomes enriched uh, with all kinds of opulences that even the denizens of heaven worship uh, worship it uh, with all affection. But by the will of the Lord, the whole earth can at once be changed. He can do and undo a thing by his sweet will. Therefore, no one should consider himself to be self-sufficient or independent of the Lord. This is the most important statement. And we should meditate on this because the situation can change dramatically in a minute. And that's called... A, uh, a, a catastrophe. So devotees should always work with dependence on the mercy of the Lord and never think that we are independent or personally empowered by some kind of material, uh, uh, let's say, uh, strategy. We should always know that any moment things can change, therefore our consciousness should be fixed on uh, praying to the Lord and that praying is made easy today. Like, let's say, if I was a Sri Vaishnava, I would have to mem memorize the uh, Sasranam Sutra, right? Thousand names of Vishnu, and be able to recite the whole thing. And I'm not that great at memory, but Prabhupada has made it easy. Lord Chaitanya has made it easy. All I have to do is just say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. And all those thousand names are included in this mantra. So, and even in the Vishnu Sasram Sotram, it says if you say the name of Rama three times, it's equal to the whole Sasram Sotram. But yet, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it says if you say the name of Krishna once, it's equal to uh, uh, chanting uh, uh, many names of Lord Rama. So, so we don't realize how fortunate we are uh, because uh, Lord Chaitanya, spread, by spreading the Sankirtan movement, has made it very easy for us to go back to God if we want to. The only question is, do we actually want to? And that's why we have classes, that's why we're trying to read the scriptures and meditate on Prabhupada's words and, and Krishna's words. Okay, we'll start right there. We'll go to Srila Prabhupada Ki any questions? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. I have a question right at the, from the verse itself in What's translation. That? 